Let's visit some more of these variable types in C++. We visited the integer type in last video, but the integer type is actually a very general type of variable. Let's see some more of the detailed types of number variables we have in C++. Let's make a variable of type unsigned short integer and let's call it y. The unsigned short integer is an integer, it's still a number type. The specification of unsigned short means like this. Unsigned means that it is a variable which cannot contain a number that's below zero. This is a useful variable to use if you're if you need a variable that's never going to have a number below zero like let's say if you have a variable holding uh, the number of someone's age and no one could ever be negative 15 years old you would want to use a unsigned integer that's what the unsigned specification means short means we are using a variable which doesn't take up so much space in the big storage room so to speak it's a shorter type of integer and as a consequence cannot hold a large range of numbers on my compiler the unsigned short integer can hold numbers from 0 until 65535 five. this is the range of numbers which my unsigned short integer could hold so why at any given point can have 0 or it can have 1 or 2 or 3 or anything all the way up to this number over here and it cannot have a number that's below 0 because it is unsigned and it cannot have a number that's more than this number over here because it is short so this is our unsigned short integer now we have the unsigned long integer we'll call a variable of this z for this time as you can probably guess this is still unsigned which means it cannot go below zero but this one is long which means it will take up a little bit more space in the big storage room but you can have a lot bigger number with this type of variable on my compiler the unsigned long integer could hold numbers from zero all the way till this number whatever that is that's a pretty large number if you're using uh, if you're in a situation where you need a big big number well you might think of using the unsigned long integer which takes up a little bit more space than the short integer but you can have a lot bigger number inside of it next we have our signed short integer let's call one of these a and our signed long integer let's call this one b as you can guess these integers can have numbers that go below zero there are many situations which you may need a number in your program that has to go below zero of course so for those situations you might want to use the signed integers and if you need a number which can go a lot below zero and a lot above zero you might want to use the long integer and if you don't need to go so far below zero and above zero you can use the signed short integer you should always remember the limits of your number variable type that you have and never try to give it a wrong type of number if you give a wrong type of number to the wrong type of variable you will get unexpected results for example our unsigned short int y cannot have big numbers and cannot go below zero let's try to give y a number that's below zero y signing minus 10 minus 10 is a negative number and it goes below zero 
Now, like we did in the last video, let's check what is actually inside of Y by printing out its contents on the console window. So let's see out output operator Y semicolon. And let's check what we see. If you would wish to see negative 10, well, no luck today because Y is a unsigned short integer. Let's compile and see what we have over here. Whoa, 65526. How did that number get into Y? As we see over here, we are printing Y when we gave it negative 10. Well, the answer is simple. You gave a unsigned integer a negative number, which it is not meant to have. We will explain in a different video tutorial exactly why did it get this specific number, 65526, but just for now, let's just say that it has a bad number in it, a weird number, because you gave it a number that it's not supposed to have. So let's give our variables some appropriate numbers. y equals 10, z equals 1 million, because they could take big numbers, a equals negative 100, b equals negative 1 million, because you could take big negative numbers. Let's check to see if they actually have correct numbers. C out, output operator, y, and here's a little trick. Let's add another output operator, and then our end line keyword, which we saw in a different video tutorial, that causes a carriage return, meaning that the next line will be printed on the next line in the console window. And meanwhile, we learned this neat trick that you could string together a whole bunch of stuff to be printed out in the console window by just separating each of the pieces that you want to print out with another output operator, these two triangular brackets. So let's print out the rest of our stuff. Z carriage return, end line, and then A, and then finally B. And let's check if this is working, compiling, and here we go. Our output is 10, 1 million, negative 100, and negative 1 million, just as we assign to them in these variables. And as you notice, they all appear on each each one on a separate line because we put the end line keyword right at the end of each variable's number. So these are the four types of integer variables, which are all a type of integers. You can, by the way, type just regular short and just regular long. But it makes you wonder what is int just by itself? What is short just by itself? What is long just by itself? Is it signed or is it unsigned? Is int long or short? If we don't specify it clearly, what are the rest of the specifications of these types of variables? Well, this is one of those things which depends on everyone's compiler. The programmers who created your specific compiler decided for their own compiler the rules of what type of specific variable int it will be and short will be and long will be. On my compiler, int by itself is exactly like the signed long integer b right over here. To make things clearer, it is always useful to type the full specification of the type of variable you'd like to use. But if you don't really care and if it doesn't really make a difference, you could just type something like int short or long. And one last hint, by the way, when you're typing the specification like unsigned short or unsigned long, you can cut out the int part at the end. You could just have unsigned short, unsigned long, signed short, and signed long, and the compiler will know that you're talking about an integer number variable type.